and we together started um, uh, some sort of committee which we are about to talk about. Yes, because um, because uh, the, the more the, the more we, we, we the more we uh, the more we get into into uh, into creating free knowledge and working in the area of open educational resources and uh, and working in the area of free culture, the more we get into politics. And uh, we found that uh, that we found that uh, that through the last I would say five six years. What we do is, uh, is more and more political, uh, and, and the, the projects we are working on are in fact uh, the political projects because our aim is to change the world. And um, uh, and uh, we and as a as a motto of this of this workshop, we have chosen the the, the, the quotation from Yasser Kuran, which, which said in somewhere between seventy six and uh, seventy nine, he said, "Do not burn committees." Set up your arm, and uh, in order to understand what he meant, uh, you need to know a little bit about uh, about uh, the Poland during the communist era. Communist era. Please come in, sit down, have fun. So you, you, need, you need to know a little bit more on the on, on, on uh, what Poland was like in the communist era. So uh, Poland, as you probably know, is a country of uh, of people which love freedom. And um, and Poles, uh, uh, and Poles uh, repeatedly rebelled against uh, against the uh, communist uh, government. And uh, the, the first such a mass protest was in '56, and it kind of set up a cliche for how the mass protest during communist era will look like. So there were people gathering, and there was a local party committee burning. Then there was uh, soldiers and tanks. Uh, on the street, there were people killed, and then for the next ten years, um, there, uh, nothing will happen. And this, uh, this, uh, this, um, the, and, and this happened again and again. This happened in '68. This happened in '70. This happened in '76. The local party committee was burned. People were on the street protesting. There was no there retire. There were soldiers. They were killed, and uh, and the mass protest was to end. And uh, and after '76, after '76, the, the, the democratic opposition started to strengthen. And uh, the Yasek Kuran said said in that era, "Do not burn committees, set up your own." And uh, and if you know uh, Polish history a little bit, you know what what was next. The next was the the next the next was here uh, uh, 1980 and uh, Solidarity Movement. I mean, and this is exactly what, what happened. When people stopped burning committees. They started to set up their own committees, which was the solidarity movement. And um, and uh, and uh, and, uh, and then was the, the, the and uh, and this and this policy. I mean, this way of making politics uh, proved to be successful because in 1989, uh, 1989, we had uh, we had the uh, round table. And uh, on uh, and in July '89, uh, we had uh, we had the first free elections uh, in Eastern Bloc countries, and uh, that was it is worth it worth to remember that the first the free elections in Poland have been more than half year before the fall of the of the uh, of the uh, of the uh, of the Berlin Wall. Uh, so it was really 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 ahead of what was happening in, in other Eastern uh, Eastern, uh, Eastern European countries. So, so, uh, so, so this is kind of. I mean, this is kind of. Uh, this, so this is kind of set up to think about. I mean, and uh, and then we get to the because. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so because because um, uh, because we, we we work in the area of free knowledge and we have a goal to accomplish. The goal is. Well, the, the, the idea was that uh, there are a lot of NGOs <coughs> around which do more or less the same stuff. I mean, but they did it uh, separately. So among others, for example, the Jarek Lipschitz Foundation started to make the uh, f, <coughs> f textbooks for schools which are available under free licenses. Of course, Wikipedia exists for 10 years in Poland. <coughs> And there were more and more such small organizations doing something somewhere in their corners. 
So the idea was to put all these people together uh, to make more power, to, if, uh, to make a changes to copyright law and other things which uh, we should cope with uh, uh, the Polish uh, government. And it was idea to establish such kind of well, uh, uh, over organization, head organization together with with the others. Okay, so uh, uh, so so. So and we and we we we've been, we've been thinking and we we we've been a group of loosely scattered organizations and people and uh, as usual in the in the area of open everything uh, in Poland we could, uh, we know we, we knew each other very well and it was very few of us because I mean I, we virtually knew each other and um, and it was like five people maybe six. That's it, and, um, and we had a certain areas of interest because we we we, we, had, we had a goal. We want we want the world of the free knowledge, and we, so we had a certain areas of interest in the terms of the politic change. So it was the access to public information, government data. It so it was open educational resources as public policy. Uh, it was protection for public domain. Uh, it was copyright reform, and it's free licensing of works in publicly funded granting programs. Those are the main. This is the this is the, the main list, which is probably very similar uh, in every country in the world of the of the political tasks uh, where we do need uh, where we do need to change. Uh, and probably, yeah, and probably and probably you can you can add something to uh, to this to, 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 to this list. Probably maybe you can add the privacy. And uh, but uh, but but this is but this is the the the, the, the general grid. So uh, then the, our coalition, we call this coalition for open education, and at the beginning it was established by four organizations, Wikimedia Polska, Fundacja Nowoczesna Polska of Jared Lipschitz, Librarian Association of Poland, and Creative Commons Poland. And uh, these four uh, organizations started to advertise the coalition, and more and more organizations uh, joined us, and you will see list of them, there are actually 12 of them, right? And uh, there are no only NGOs, but also uh, two uh, universities. There is the, one of the best technical university uh, in Poland, the uh, Academy of uh, 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 the Academy of Kraków. Uh, and then there is a uh, uh, computer super center of the University of Warsaw, uh, and, uh, and there is also uh, uh, Orange Foundation, and this is foundation which uh, provides grants from to, to produce free content under CC BY uh, license. And What's interesting is that Orange is, uh, is uh, the biggest Polish telecom right now. So this is this is this is quite a thing. Yes, and there are of course a sets of of many uh, organizations about which we are not enough time to, to say. And uh, what we achieved it was we have a financial support from Open Society Institute uh, grant, which is uh, actually uh, founded to for Fundacja Nowoczesna Polska, but it's for our college. Okay, so uh, our approach. I mean, we started. We started. We started in 2009 as a coalition, and uh, our approach. Uh, and our approach was, uh, uh, I would say, bidirectional. Uh, the first, the, the first, the first area of work. It was the work on, uh, in, in the field of influencing public policy. So we organized the conference in Polish Parliament. Uh, we are. Uh, uh, that was the first task of the coalition. And uh, this uh, conference was quite successful. It was uh, more than 300 people attending, with uh, several representatives to Parliament. It turned out to, it turned out to be uh, that organizing a conference in Parliament is very easy. Um, uh, I mean, I mean, it's not. If you know how to do this, if you know how to do this, but uh, but but basically, you, you you have to you have to find a one supporting representative, and uh, the, uh, to, to be a leader of the, of the conference. So, uh, so, uh, and we, and what we do uh, from the very beginning, we screen the, uh, any new changes uh, which are uh, are proposed to the law, and we are taking active part in discussing or raising the points and uh, and creating media buzz about things which are uh, which are which are which are which are, uh, which are harming uh, the, the the public good, 
uh, or, we are, or media buzz or about good proposals we are trying to uh, we are trying to, 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 to introduce. And um, another important task was uh, was working with media, and um, the, the, this was the, this was very this, this is the, this was very important. We organized uh, we successfully pushed the uh, pushed the idea of public domain, uh, organizing every year public domain day in Poland. And uh, this year it was the first time that uh, actually the public domain day uh, celebrations have been not in just Warsaw. The, our capital, but in three different cities. Uh, so, the, so the idea is spreading also locally. And, um, and I think, I, I think that the, 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 this widespread celebration of public domain day are only in Poland and Italy. In other countries, it's not such uh, visible. And, uh, and, and one thing we would, would like to, 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 to have you think about is uh, that, that, that maybe this is this is this is the way. Uh, this is the way we could, we could organize yourself on, in other countries because uh, because it's very good from the uh, because it, because the, the, the public domain day is is a perfect event for media because on January first there is really nothing to write about in newspapers so if you have uh, if you have such an event and you have uh, a list of important uh, writers getting into the public domain you will, you are sure to get published with this message. And this way, you can, you can really introduce uh, people to other problems related to, 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 to free knowledge. So, and, uh, so, but, so, this is, so this is the work we do in the public. And, this, and, and, and the second area, which was, was very important, was getting out of the ghetto. Because, uh, uh, because for years we've been living, uh, we've been, we've been uh, I mean, we virtually knew each other. Uh, we lived there with, within the same group of people. And um, it was very hard to find, uh, I mean, to find, to school, to teach other people uh, so they can join us and they can take, take their tasks, especially that there is more work that we can, we can handle. Uh, so we started, so we started, so we started a program of training leaders and, um, and uh, this is, uh, this is also very interesting because uh, this is the meeting we had in, Ju uh, in July this year in Torun. And um, this is the group of the leaders of different organizations, so, I mean, of educational institutions, of uh, non-profit uh, non organizations, uh, which were very carefully selected. We, uh, we, we have those, tra those trainings are very, very elitarist, only for 10 to 12 people could be accepted. We got 50 to 60 the CVs sent, and, and we carefully pick up the people which will join us because the, the, the people from organizations which can intro, which can change their policy to be more open, and um, uh, the general rule we are trying to, we, we, was that we do not accept people we know, because people we know already they are already introduced to the idea of free culture, of free knowledge. We want to, we only accept people we don't know, and this proved successful. I mean, we started those trainings two years ago. And and the, and um, and, uh, and this training in July was the first training which, which was organized by the second wave by the people which was which were trained in the first in the first wave. So so uh, the, the group of the group of people we can cooperate, which understand what we are talking about when we say free culture, free knowledge, now is much much wider. And this is why the, the coalition is growing because because we actively support. Uh, support support newcomers. We train them, and then we and then and then we provide we provide ourselves uh, 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 all all kind of all kind of uh, all kind of support uh, regarding licensing. I mean, answering questions like what kind of uh, what kind of contract I need to sign with an author if I want to publish this work under free license. The, those, are, those are not the trivial answers. I, I must say. I mean, you need lawyer for that. And so, if you have support group, it's uh, I mean, introducing an open policy to uh, to institution becomes easy task. And uh, when it was before, it was a hard task. So, and also we, of course, we we have a, a very very active website um, uh, uh, where we uh, where we which we update uh, which we update twice or three times a week with news about 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 uh, all things re related. To, uh, to open educational resources and free launch. Okay.
Okay, and uh, what is worth mentioning is that we are not alone. I mean that uh, that uh, that when we, that uh, that in the field of uh, that in the field of public policy, we are we are uh, we we are really closely knitted with other groups which participate in, uh, which, which which participate in the same process. So, for example, uh, so for example, uh, internet dialogue group was started uh, uh, January last year when our government proposed a, law, a new law uh, which, which, which uh, introduced internet blocking. And uh, the Modern Poland Foundation was back then was a headquarters uh, of, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the movement opposing this. And, uh, and, around this, and around this conflict, created community which um, started to talk. I mean, the, pro the protest was uh, so loud that the government had, uh, had no choice but to start talking with us. And because and they started talking about us, and we effectively, uh, and we effectively widened the you know the topics on the table from internet blocking to all the, all, all sorts of, of problems related to to, to, to governing the internet. Uh, including public policy on uh, public policy on uh, on on, uh, on uh, educational resources uh, and uh, and free culture. So so uh, this in, uh, so this internet dialogue dialogue group uh, now helps draft the future law for the internet in Poland. And uh, the, the the biggest success uh, as for today uh, was that uh, there is a new law about public uh, public uh, sector information. Which uh, which would be very which if which is now in Parliament so uh, so please uh, please 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 help us to get it passed the, the project uh, the, 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 the project has government support so so it's very likely that it, it will get passed by Parliament and uh, 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 and this will make the the Poland the most open uh, the most open European Union country regarding public information sector we will be very close to the standard of the United States. Which is the public information is the public domain. Uh, none of the European country has a law uh, like that uh, 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 as for now. So there is uh, another group which uh, which is very active is that is this the group called Obywatele Kultury Citizens for Culture. Uh, this was group um, this was group which start which was uh, started um, which was started by accident by the Ministry of Culture, which organized uh, which organized the propaganda. Uh, uh, a cultural Congress uh, in Krakow, and it was uh, it was ministry organized, and it, and it was meant to to, to provide propaganda uh, for the politics of Ministry of Culture. It's, but if you if you if you get uh, 2,000 the brightest minds uh, in one place, you're surely you're surely getting things out of the control, and um, the I mean. And, and uh, uh, so, this is, uh, so, so, so because people started talking, they started to communicate. They uh, we set up mailing lists uh, very quickly, and um, and, 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 and this and, uh, and this movement, successful culture, uh, forced the minister for culture to completely change their proper public policy. <laughs> And um, and instead of uh, of cutting the budget for culture, they were forced to uh, they were they were forced to uh, almost twice the budget for culture in Poland. So uh, uh, so but 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 the, uh, and uh, and and just recently in the, in the spring this year uh, uh, we signed the, the pact for culture with Polish Prime Minister and and of course the of course the the the, 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 the budget for the, the, the budget of Minister of Culture was the main topic. However, in this pact for culture, there are also uh, a few things which are very interesting from the point of view of free knowledge, because there is very strong support. There is very strong support for uh, public domain protection, and um, and uh, and there is uh, uh, there are, there are solutions for libraries and archives, and for for digitalization and uh, and uh, and uh, probably all glam uh, session uh, attenders know what that means. Uh, uh, for for uh, for Wikimedia, and um, uh, but, but uh, there is also uh, but, but there is also some support, some support for for models for free license. So 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 and those groups are really closely connected and very good communicated, and uh, and uh, and uh, and we are working together to 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 to, uh, to make the change. And uh, the, and the result is and the result of this of the, of all this uh, uh, effort. Was uh, the, the 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 announcement of uh, Polish Prime Minister, which made it uh, which made it, uh, its way to Slashdot, 
and, uh, and then that was all information funded from public sources should be available as public property free for everyone to use it as they wish and um, so uh, the, so which is uh, and uh, and this uh, this setups the, the, the you know the, the, the policy direction of Polish government uh, uh, for future years which is uh, which uh, which I think is quite remarkable okay so so this is this is this is this is how we organize ourselves, and this is how and, and this is where we got ourselves in Poland. So and um, and so the idea is that we just would like to give you a kind of receipt how to establish similar coalition in other countries. As we know, in many countries there are some problems which are specific, some are similar with Polish one, but anyway, having such a coalition we believe is really a good thing, and uh, probably the vast majority of people here are from uh, Wikimedia chapters or from uh, Wikimedia movement in general, so we have already a network all over the world which could start such coalitions. <coughs> so this is the idea how to do this. So point one, look for allies. Just of course, obvious choice is local Wikimedia chapter, which could be a kind of catalyst of all process. Uh, then, Internet Society <coughs> in many countries have very similar goals. Uh, creative Commons, uh, when there is a Creative Commons branch in, an, in, in a given country. Then, a floss organization like, for example, the uh, local Usenet groups uh, or local uh, Linux groups. Mm -hmm. uh, then, uh, librarians are usually of uh, big help. In our case, the librarian association is really big help because they have, you know, the, they, they have uh, 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 branches all over the, 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 the Poland, and uh, it really helps to spread our idea. Uh, then any other educational non-profits, uh, human rights organization, universities, if they start pro pro to provide some free stuff or they are just maybe thinking about it, etc., etc. So first, when you look for an island, island, you can make a list of them and then start thinking to which organization start to talk first. Then. Uh, it's a good idea to, before you set up the formal or, uh, organization, to organize something together. So our coalition started just because we organized this uh, conference in the uh, Polish parliament, which was of interest of Wikimedia Polska and uh, Foundation Nowoczesna Polska. Uh, and you can make a conference, uh, but if it's too complicated for, for you, you can just set up a meeting to ask uh, people from other organizations to come to talk, uh, or you can try to organize workshop with them, whatever, to start doing something together. Then, uh, the point three is to start to teach others, uh, I mean to create tutorials, for example, how to use free uh, licenses not only uh, in uh, Wikimedia context but generally. Uh, uh, then, uh, what is public domain and how to use public domain? And we, when you issue on your website or in printed form such kind of material, so you can then spread them to other organizations. <coughs> Then, of course, quite important thing is to secure funding. In our case, at the beginning, we just make maybe not membership fee, but we just decided if we were doing a common conference, who pay for what, and each organization had to add some money to, to organize the conference. But actually, we are happy to have a grant from Open Institute, uh, 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 which is really a big thing, because then there is uh, maybe not plenty, but the substantial amount of money which we can use for coalition only. Then, uh, uh, when you have this coalition, so then, as uh, Jarek said, you are in your own corner. No one knows you. You probably know all these people to, with whom you cooperate for four years before. So then you should start to think how to appear in public. And uh, one of good idea is define yourself through conflict. I mean, there, for example, you can start to uh, talk about changes in copyright law 
and start to find someone to conflict with, for example, the publishers, and then you can start talking and the uh, uh, publisher makes some heavy and you want to make it better, and then you can start to talk to politicians about it, and then the journalists, and then there is something which is of interest for journalists because journalists love conflicts, right? No, no, no just being nice at the time. Okay, this is somewhat controversial, I think, because, uh, because uh, uh, for example, in Poland, a lot of people, uh, a, a lot of people tended to, uh, to uh, they, they, they don't want to appear, uh, to appear publicly as controversial, and uh, and this is and this is this is some somewhat a strategic decision, I mean, the, a certain decision what what will work best, and we found that. Uh, Actually, uh, that actually defining yourself through conflict is very effective uh, because um, uh, because uh, 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 because it helps to uh, it helps to, uh, it really helps to get the media attention uh, where you have conflicting interests and uh, and, uh, and yeah and. And this was somewhat accidental that uh, the Internet Dialogue group, group, for example, started started with this uh, with the with the protest against internet blocking. But uh, but this really helped to to to, to raise Internet uh, uh, Dialogue group uh, into the position which uh, in which the the group was able to talk with the government as partners, not uh, not as you know. Uh, People asking for something and no one knows who they really are, and the same was with citizens of uh, for culture, right? I mean, that started with conflict about budget cuts, and this elevated uh, the citizens for, for for culture group to the position uh, which allowed it to discuss also the protection for public domain. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so and then finally, what you should do, you should of course communicate yourself, which means you should set up some meetings, uh, 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 write to uh, uh, write to uh, a TV station, uh, broadcast your uh, uh, your tutorials and uh, uh, some information to other NGOs. Uh, we go to various conferences, not only conferences which are really very of scope of you, but even for scientific conferences or to kind conferences about open culture and anywhere where you can go. And then <coughs> you can spread your idea and then some usually if, if after such kind of broadcasting some new organization can come to you. Okay, so um uh, so uh, be before I think we, before we get to the to the we have like uh, ten to fifteen minutes no more. Uh, how much time do we have? Is there anyone? Hmm? Do we have six to six pages? We started with that. You started with that. Yeah. Okay, so we have. We should continue. So. So we have like 15 minutes. So maybe we can start with questions and answers, and uh, for a few minutes, and then we will have like a short brainstorming uh, uh, on uh, how would you uh, think about 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 uh, about starting the uh, political change support group in your country. But first, maybe, maybe first question from which countries you are. So United States. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Okay, who is from US? Okay, who is from European Union countries? Okay, who is from Asia? Who is from Africa? Israel is Asian, no? Israel is Eastern European country, I would say. Read your vision. Okay, so do you have any questions to what we said? Yes. Um, you said you contacted other NGOs and institutions. Um, did you uh, avoid political parties or did you exclude political parties or uh, what's the stance on that? Okay, so uh, do you think you should invite them? Okay, or? so so regarding our, our we we work in the field of policy, not in the field of politics. So uh, so 
in general, we do not allow political parties, you know, to be a part of coalition. I mean, we talk with everyone who wants to listen to us. So we talk with every political party. Uh, this also helps because, you know, government, government, government changes from time to time. I mean, in Poland every four years. So you really need to talk with uh, really everyone. Because, uh, because, uh, because if, if you don't do this, after four years you are in a position that you have to start all the world over, right? So, 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 so this, is the, this is the way we... Uh, we also, the, the organizations which create... The, the, we have a common goal. The goal is public funding, public availability. I mean, public funding with free licenses. This is our goal. This is, this is our policy. There are very different organizations. There are very different political views on different topics. I mean, we need not want to talk about, I don't know, abortion. Uh, yes, well, uh, because this is not what, what is our goal. And, uh, and probably different, uh, I mean, so, so, so different, different members of the group have very different political views, from far left to far right, and, um, and, uh, and, and of course a lot of in the middle of that. But, uh, but, but we don't talk about it. We, we, we share a common goal, we talk with everyone, we do not allow uh, the other political views to influence to influence the working of the coalition. But what 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 is good to do, for example, is to look at your parliament, for example, and I don't know how it is in other countries, but usually it's like that. That in parliament there are commission for this topic or another topic, and for example in Poland there is a commission for copyright law, which works constantly. So then it's good to look at what. Uh, MPs are there, and who are maybe those who, to whom you can talk because they seem to be more uh, open than others. And then this is the, the, the good choice, no, not thinking about from which political party they are. Of course, the most influential are always those from the leading party. But you must be careful not to be attached too much to the current leading party because you know after several years it might be a big pain for you when everyone thinks you are too connected with with, with single party. Uh, I mean, I mean, I I, I, I would even say that it's um, that it's uh, that it's very wise to uh, to to to, uh, to 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 have to have uh, uh, I mean to to. Uh, uh, to think about it when you when you when you start working with people and to invite people uh, with uh, really different uh, with really different views uh, 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 on politics and the public and different public image on politics because uh, this way you you can you can uh, I mean this, this this way you also show that the group is the group which is it's which that the, the group has no hidden goals that the, the all all the goals you know are on the table. And 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 uh, and uh, that the group is low. For example, that the group is not a, a, a hidden out, uh, outlet of some political party, right? And more, moreover, when you speak to politicians, they behave differently, you know, when they are journalists and in public, and different when they are sitting in a room and talk with, with, with the person. So even if this person is in in fact your well enemy. <coughs> Because uh, he or she has a different point of view. For example, he just supports the publishers and have copyright. So anyway, you can talk with such a person, just telling uh, what is about free licenses, why is it good, uh, why not to establish, and it does not uh, necessarily hurt this uh, mainstream publisher. If uh, they can still continue their business, maybe they should change a little bit their business model, but we are not going to kill them, right? So that's, uh, and then sometimes you see that there is some under, at least understanding you know, what, what you are talking to, 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 to them, so, and they might start thinking, well, maybe these guys are not so bad, and maybe they have some. Some something there is something in it. So it is yeah, I, have, I have been seeing this coming from a specific Britain corner because internet, uh, like you said, the internet censorship thing. Uh, most uh, let's say conservative parties are for internet censorship in some form. So you haven't been seen as as a uh, as like like not uh, not conservative like like left wing or socialist. 
I would say, but I would say problem. most of the most of the representatives to parliament, most of the politicians have absolutely no idea what the internet is. Oh. Uh, and uh, in fact, they are really happy. I mean, after some time, they are really happy that there is someone who can explain them what the internet is, which is not business, because business has uh, you know particular interest and uh, and and uses and 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 uses lobbying, you know, to get more money. From, from from this or that source, and uh, and the citizens group are, are different, and uh, actually politicians politicians like citizens groups much much more. I don't know how it works in Poland. I suspect it's the same as the United States. That there are really two levels of government. There are the elected officials, and then there are people, the people who run the office and do all the work, and they do not change. From administration to administration. Uh, oh, in Poland, the people change quite often in ministers. <laughs> yeah. Generally, yes. But then the same thing. Continuity, because the people who are hired, who are public employees, they're not elected officials. They know what's going on, and they guide the elected officials actually. And so they are the ones that we that are very useful to talk to when we want to get some bug planted in the politicians. Mind because it doesn't matter which administration is in power, it's the same under people. Yeah. Uh, people well, I mean, in Poland, there is a, a set of the governmental employees who stays, but usually on lower low, low level, and from almost middle level to top top level, they changes completely after the change of government. So it's not like in the United States or in France, when there is the, the, the scopes of the, uh, of the governmental of, of employees. No, in, in Poland, there is something like this, but it's very, very weak. And uh, the, the people who make decisions are, are in fact goes even on the middle level, if, if they are changed after the change of government. Uh, I mean, of course, there's, there are people which, uh, like that, on the, uh, in the ministries and, uh, and especially on the local level. But I mean, on the, on the, on the, on the federal level, it's, it's not really like that. On the local level, it's, 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 it's much more stable. However, I mean, my personal experience is that uh, if you want to, to, to make a change, you need to talk with a top brass, which makes decisions. If you want to, you know, to, to keep something intact, uh, it's better because 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 uh, because this uh, this uh, this uh, uh, these public servants which work, you know, on the uh, uh, which are not top brass and which doesn't change, they usually they work for continuity, and uh, they are very reluctant to push change, you know, from inside of the uh, of the of the uh, of the public policy body. Uh, the, the, the change comes from outside foot of brass. Right. That they are usually afraid of doing any serious decision on that. Uh, they just follow what the top management tells them. Right? It's good about um, <coughs> presenting ideas. Of course, they don't. Yes, of course, that, that support helps, and uh, and we have been trying doing that. But uh, and we've been trying. I mean, but but those. I mean, but the, I mean those. These proved to be not effective. Because we started actually in 2009 after the conference in Parliament. What we did, we made a training uh, uh, for the uh, for the uh, for the for the uh, 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 for the uh, workers uh, in the Ministry of Education, and this was, I mean, completely ineffective. It was lost effort because they came, they had two days long course on uh, what open uh, uh, free licenses are and what is open, what are open educational resources and how they can save government money by switching to open educational resources uh, model and nothing happened. I mean, and so, so, so uh, uh, we've been much more successful working in a way we described, uh, we described, uh, we described before, I mean, uh, yeah. In your core group, what's the fraction of pay staff and volunteer? Okay, for so so basically all the policy work is done uh, is done by volunteers, uh, and uh, and uh, uh, when and uh, uh, there are people. I mean, people are getting paid in their, in their respective organizations, and the respective organizations you know have different programs and different sources of funding. Some are government funded, some not. I mean, universities. And uh, nobody's getting 
fight for working, uh, working uh, uh, for coalition, except, uh, and this was the important, and the coalition secretary, this is the higher person, which keeps tracks on, uh, on everything, I mean, because the leaders, and uh, the, the leaders they don't really have time because they, they are also managers in their own organizations. So there is a, there is a coalition secretary and the, and, uh, which is getting paid and makes things done. And, uh, and, and there is one person uh, for uh, updating the website uh, and writing stuff. I mean, uh, also this really helps because, because the leaders they usually they don't have enough time, for example, to, to, uh, to I mean, they have enough time to, you know, to, 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 to tell someone what should be written, yes, but be, not to enough to write it themselves, okay? To be, to be clear, the coalition is not a legal entity. It's just a loose uh, coalition of organization. There is formal paper with every, uh, something like, like with media charter, you know, with, with basic goals. But there is no legal entity. So the money uh, actually is formally paid to the Foundation Nowoczesna Polska, and all these employees are employees of Foundation Nowoczesna Polska. Uh, but the, and then uh, we have a board, and the, the board is just one person from each organization. And the, there is a mailing list for, 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 for the board, and all the decisions are just made by, by discussion and consensus. So I, 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 the, the budget we have for the work, uh, work of the coalition uh, consists mainly. I mean, the, the main positions are uh, the lawyers' expertise. This is very, this is very important, and, and, and we do hire lawyers to, to do expertise for us, and uh, uh, for to organize trainings for uh, 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 trainings for leaders of other organizations. This is the, because we find it really important, and and and. Uh, and 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 this, this uh, organizing the you know like three or four days long training I mean really cost a lot of money so so uh, and uh, and uh, and there is um, uh, and there is uh, uh, and there is some money for uh, for uh, promotion of the website and things like that so so that's uh, that, that that's what what uh, what 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 we, what we spend money for and. Uh, uh, this is also, and, uh, and because and, uh, 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 personally I'm also a very active member of Citizens for Culture group and Internet Dialogue group, Citizens for Culture uh, have chosen a very similar model to, to, to Open Education Coalition. Uh, they have, uh, however, they will have membership, uh, membership fees. I mean, the organization will put, and, uh, and the budget will look, I mean, almost exactly the same. The secretary, someone to, 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 to write things, the leaders don't have time to write. And uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, lawyers expertise. So uh, so this is like uh, this. Is, I mean I mean I mean if you if you, I mean it, it seems that it's just the things you need to 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 to, to, to have a more policy change. Okay, we have very few minutes left. So let's start uh, the real workshop. Okay, and uh, mm, and. Uh, and uh, what, what, what we think would, would be helpful is to, uh, to, 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 to now to brainstorm a little bit what kind of allies can you envision uh, if you want to make, uh, make, make, make a policy change uh, in, in the... Sorry? It's going to be very short. Yes, I know. I, 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 yes, 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 I know. So, please. The newspapers. Newspapers, okay. Media, right? Educators. Educators. Educators, you mean who? The teachers or uh, informal education? Yeah, activist teachers. Activist teachers? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, 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 I will add to media uh, bloggers. That was very, uh, it was very, uh, 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 it was uh, very important in the very beginning to get uh, to get the message, uh, you know, out of the door. I mean, the the the, the, the bus on the uh, on different websites uh, until we get with the with the message to the mainstream. No, no, for me, the big surprise in coalition was the librarian. No, 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 no more talking. Okay. Brainstorming. Who else? <laughs> that little. It says educators, teachers, media bloggers, right, and activists, teachers. Like you said, newspapers are not just media, so it's more concrete, different to, uh, to electronic media as blogs. Okay. Senior citizens. 
senior citizens. They have yes. the time, they can volunteer, they can help. Yes. Yes. In Poland there are in fact several seats and uh, retired personal organization. Maybe we should talk to them. <laughs> Who else? You? Prisoners. Prisoners. Why prisoners? They want to be free. <laughs> okay. I, I found this disturbing, <laughs> but uh, I found this disturbing. But this leads me to the to the one ally, which is usually uh, which is which is usually omitted when we think about free culture politics, which is human rights groups. And uh, and this was very important in Poland. I mean, our link to to the the, 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 the establishing uh, links with uh, with uh, with uh, with, uh, uh, with Amnesty International and uh, Helsinki Watch. And it was, they were very supportive, and they do have lawyers, which is uh, which is very important. And so and so open, uh, open source until open source organizations and international uh, such organizations. Yes, was right. Yeah. Uh, and also ethics and so on. Okay, who else? In the artist groups. Yeah, so if you put this online, you can keep on hacking on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And uh, and so uh, just to finish, I would I would I think uh, uh, I I think there is uh, one more uh, one more field to add, uh, which is uh, yeah. Refugees and asylum seekers. <laughs> Once again, refugees and asylum seekers. Of of what? Refugees or people who are seeking asylum. Often they can't work and they've got to plan on their house. Okay. Those would be human rights. Handicapped people. Disabled. No, we have one, one, one handicapped. Uh, I mean, the deaf people are very sad. Yes, this is very important. Because uh, because free knowledge is very important for uh, is very important is for, very important for uh, for handicapped people and it also gives you much much a lot of arguments when you talk about it uh, with, uh, with politicians. Um, open access movement. Open access, yes, libraries. Okay, I'm afraid we have to finish that. I mean, like break it in a in the middle of uh, of something. Uh, but uh, our idea was to but our idea was to, you, to to inspire you to think about the political change and how you can do this. And uh, we hope uh, this task uh, is somehow accomplished. And we would like to thank you uh, very much for participating. And we would like also to invite you to the. the uh, also to invite you to the, uh, to, the, to, the to the speech on political change, uh, which will be uh, which will be which will, which will happen like uh, in half of an hour in the in this uh, room. Uh, in the in uh, in cinema uh, in cinema tech uh, in cinema tech, which could be, which could be part of uh, I think uh, a nice follow up for uh, for what we will be talking about uh, today. Thank you very much.
your experiences, to discuss questions uh, which come up like when you're listening to us, uh, and also discuss how in the future we're going to be in contact with people running similar uh, approaches in different uh, countries. So the first slide will be the first real slide will be about the project how how stands as I said for third age online. Uh, we are focusing on two primary questions: how can we stimulate more uh, social interaction among older citizens or even online communities, uh, so to integrate them in these communities to enhance their social uh, relationships thanks to technical means. And the second big question, which is particularly interesting, I think, for Wikipedia, is how can we use this growing reservoir of older people to boost collaboration with our communities? The, no, the project has two main goals. One is to develop measures uh, and to develop, develop and spread measures to actually integrate uh, older people in communities. And the second one is more focusing on technical aspects like accessibility, usability, uh, how to actually improve user experience. We have four uh, communities. Yeah, I can try to do that. Yeah, we have. <laughs> sorry. No, no, I just try. I just try to talk to the tree up there, so <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> um, we have four community partners. Uh, in our um, consortium, two Wikimedia chapters, the Swiss chapter and the German chapter. And we have two um, specifically senior oriented uh, online communities, Senior Web Switzerland and Senior Web Netherlands. That's our two uh, community, uh, that's our four community partners. Now, just to maybe orient your you within the, the whole of the project. Uh, the project is going to last for three years. Um, it can roughly be divided in three phases. There's an exploration phase, there's a multiplication phase where we try to get uh, successful pilots uh, kind of widened to, in a broad scale. And then there's an international, uh, internationalization phase where we try to um, get the stuff which work in one country uh, transferred to other countries or to other cultural uh, environments. Um, we are right here where the red line is. So it's somewhere in the middle of the exploration phase. So that means we are mostly busy right now with literature reviews, with first pilot projects, with usability tests, and we will now just present you what we already can present, uh, things are still ongoing, some of them. Uh, so it's a lot also about talking about working hypotheses and we will be happy also to gather your working hypotheses like based on your own experiences. Okay, so um, as Lydia said, my name is Karin Dolinsa. We're working together in this project. And um, I'm first going to give you a bit of background uh, about older people and the internet and older people on Wikipedia. Can you understand me? If you understand me, I think everybody will understand me. Why the oldest person here? No, because you're ah. far away. Ah. Yeah. Do you hear me? I hear you. Okay, perfect. Tell me if you don't hear me. Um, we have some, uh, some statistics here. They're from Germany and they, uh, they were released last month, so they're very recent and they're also um, an example of, of, st of statistics in Europe and Western Europe. Uh, what is important here and what you all know is that the internet use has been increasing dramatically in the last 10 years. Um, we have the green and the blue um, bars for the older people which are especially important to us now. Now you see um, the oldest group, like the 60 plus people, have been rising in the use of internet from 8% in 2001 till 34% uh, right now. And also the, the other groups have been rising accordingly. Um, just to tell you, of course, if 34% of the 60 plus people are using internet right now in Germany, in Western Europe, that means that two out of three are not using internet yet. So that's actually still quite a, a long way to go. 
Can, can you clarify on the previous uh, slide, please? Yes. Um, below the graph, what are the 8%, 32%? Yeah, the 8% is the, uh, the group of the 60 plus years, and the 32 is the 50 to 59%. I just put the, the numbers under it because it's quite hard to see in the bar. You understand? Okay. Yeah, the next one. So, um, after the, the older people on the internet in general, we would like to tell you something about the older people on Wikipedia. Now, this is a slide with a lot of numbers. There are two things that we actually want to focus your attention on. And the first thing is that there are very few older people on Wikipedia. 95% of people using Wikipedia is younger than 50 years old. And the remaining 5% is for everybody older than 50 years old. People older than 60 years old not, uh, represent not, not even 2%. It's 1.8, I think. Now, the other thing that is important is that although there are very few older people on Wikipedia, they're actually quite active in contributing. They're, we would say, at least as active as the younger people. You can see that here. So the group from 10 to 49 years old, there's 30% people who contribute to Wikipedia, which means that they edit or they write articles of their own. In the group uh, 50 to 60 years old, it is uh, almost 36% that is actively, actively contributing. And in the oldest group, it's almost 32%. So the baseline here is, although there are very few older people on Wikipedia, the ones who are, are at least as active in contributing as the older people. Well, I'll yes. agree this number that of that 5995 is a percentage of 35.8%. I'm sorry, I don't hear you. I'm trying to understand what 35.8% is a percentage of. Is it a percentage of the number above it? No, no, no. no, that's, that's uh, like the 100% would yeah. be the, the people between 50 and 60 participating in the online survey. Okay. Uh, yeah. And of those, you have 35% uh, contributing, and the others are just reading, and then you have some small percentages of people <coughs> having contributed but left. Uh, that's the ex contributing, the 2%. And you have the 1.5 who so probably didn't indicate anything. Contributing are different people, right? Different people, not different statements. No, 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 different people. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, so the next slide. I think what you said was 36% of those who answered the survey who use the same thing. Yeah. 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 I think the answer to your question is yes. Okay. How do you feel about representativeness of uh, this topic? Because what well, you have some kind of survey, and some people have just responded to the question. You know, how well, do you think how does it translate to the population? Well, we can talk about different types of bias we have in here. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't think it helps much to talk too much about representativeness because it can't really change a lot in it. Uh -huh. What you because can add, you what you can add, and when you have a study like that, you can talk about biases, and then you can try uh -huh. uh, tri triangulate with other studies uh -huh. or with other findings, also positive uh, findings. Because you know that the conclusion from this number is very curious because actually it shows that the percentage of contributing authors, uh, or contributing users in particular ages. Uh, actually doesn't differ at all. So it would mean that the older people don't have any problems with uh, Wikipedia, Media Wiki, things like that. Uh, they have no other, they don't have bigger problems with anything than the younger people. And actually, I don't really believe in that. So... Um, so we will go on about that <coughs> question of yours, like further, so I, I, would, I would suggest that we go on, this, this is something we will address, and okay. uh, we'll be happy to hear your... Suggestions about that in the feedback part. I, 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 I'm sorry, but I think maybe I don't get the figures, but we have roughly 100,000 contributors and we have roughly 400 million readers. 
So that's something like 0 0.001 percent of people are contributing. So why do you write here that 30 percent are contributing and 60 percent? It was just on Wikipedia users, not on Wikipedia readers and everything else, right? Yes. So that's the why here. Like the survey, it's biased towards people who but actually have an account biased. in Wikipedia. It's only the one answer. <coughs> yeah, yeah, and decided to answer a survey. A user, you mean, have registered users of Wikipedia? Yeah. There is a primary bias, of course. So why should it just be a registered user? Probably lying in the back of it. Some people registered, but never contributed. Yeah. Oh. <coughs> There's a primary bias, of course, like you would have in the general user survey, you would have uh, a bias towards persons regularly reading, regularly contributing, being much more likely to answer or to, 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 to be served the, the survey and to re reply to it. So you can't really, you can't really uh, Kind of uh, say um, like if you if you if you take this as a, as an absolute number, it's not it's not going to be it's not going to be right. It's not thirty percent of all the readers who are actually contributing. Mm -hmm. But what you can do, you can uh, compare the shares uh, among age groups of those who have actually taken part in the. In um, the there, there were there were also some. There were some evidence as well that the teenagers, in particular, answered the survey much less than people. <laughs> Hello. Uh, so. Was there evidence that? Uh... Yeah, th this is based on answer to surveys, right? Yeah. So there's also the problem that usually people 40, 50 tend to answer survey much more than, for example, teenagers. Mm -hmm. So this 30 percent is. Uh, but how, how many, how many surveys? No, but the, but, the, but that's the, the answering the survey. That's just that line, huh? Mm -hmm. Got it. So you had 175,000 people answering the survey. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I just need to say yeah, along. Ninety-five yeah. yeah. percent uh, younger than fifty. Exactly. Okay. So why are these only people that we're talking about and that there's definitely a lot of discussion about, which we've been raising the, the last part. Why are they interesting for Wikipedia? Well, first they represent a huge group. Like already 20% of the people in, living in Europe right now is older than 60%, and this is of course going up. So this, this is a huge group of people. They are possible contributors. Most of them have worked their whole life, uh, have expertise on certain subjects. So they would be interesting. Uh, to become uh, a contributor. <coughs> they have a long time perspective. Um, older people are generally more inclined to, to see their voluntary work as really a part of their personality, part of who they are. So this means that they're in there for the long run. So that's, they have a long term perspective. And they're very enthusiastic about Wikipedia. We're running in, in the project, we're running a couple of classes for older people to get to know Wikipedia, and they're always filled very fast. Like, older people are really quite interested in getting to know Wikipedia, and some of them want to become uh, contributors and, and editors and stuff like that. So they're interested. So that leaves us with, we think, two scenarios for the future, and Beat will tell you more about that. So we have seen a growing number of older people in the internet. That's something which is kind of happening. Um, we have seen that probably, I mean, we can still go on after the, the, the workshop discussing about this, but there's probably not much difference between um, reader-contributor conversion among the age groups. And third, a, there are several reasons to say that uh, it's probably useful for Wikipedia to attract more older people. So we have kind of two scenarios. One scenario is to say um, people are using internet, older people are using internet more and more. Uh, there's just a time lag. They will also discover social uh, social. Uh, networks, they will discover online communities, they will acquire all the 
uh, the abilities, the capabilities to use them, so they will finally end up also using Wikipedia and also contributing to it. We just have a time lapse, there's nothing we really need to do about it. Scenario two, uh, would be there's need for action because uh, older internet users will not automatically integrate into this community. We can think uh, about different reasons for that. We can say like late commerce always have it have a harder time integrating in an already existing community which already has set rules, whatever. Uh, and the second argument would be older people have different requirements. They have particular uh, preferences or needs uh, towards sociability, uh, with regard to usability and so on. So, Personally, as a, in my role as a public entrepreneur, like running this project, I would obviously rather um, vote for scenario two. But as a researcher, we also kind of, as researchers, we also keep in mind all scenario one. It's this kind of counter uh, perspective, uh, and I think that the world is not really white or black. It's something in between. There are certain aspects um, of the development we want to bring about, which will just happen because of the time lag, the, some things will easily just come about, uh, but we have also to look out for certain aspects which actually uh, represent uh, considerable uh, obstacles in the way uh, of older people, or also women, uh, that's uh, the whole discussion we had also today, like some people are talking on older women, uh, so it's also uh, a gender um, distinction maybe uh, that we have to look at what are the the most important obstacles which you have to kind of take out of the way from within the community. Okay. <coughs> next slide, please. So, in this next part, uh, we would like to tell you something more about uh, the obligations of older people to get on Wikipedia and the barriers they have to get on Wikipedia as well. Now, first, something about voluntary work and the motivations that people have. <coughs> In general, uh, younger and older people have a bit different pri priorities when they're talking about voluntary work. Like younger people in general uh, look at it quite rationally and, and weigh the costs and the benefits from themselves. Now, benefits that doesn't have to be something material, it can as well be helping somebody or, or, or getting satisfaction themselves. But as soon as they feel that the balance is somehow disturbed, they will quite to be inclined to just quit the voluntary work, whatever it is. Like, older people, on the other hand, uh, as we said before, often see their voluntary work as a part of themselves. They've been doing it for a long time, they have the feeling that people expect it from them, the part that they help other people weighs heavier for them, and so they're, it's part of them, they feel like it's part of them, and so it will last longer in general. Now, now, if that's like that, then one of the questions is like, what are then the barriers for older people to get involved in Wikipedia? And we uh, have some <coughs> answers here. I'll quickly walk you through what we did with that. Well, we, we took things from the quantitative study, the worldwide Wikipedia survey that we've been hearing about today and yesterday already. And we complemented that with our own qualitative studies. We did some um, usability testing with Wikipedia. Like we had older people go through a series of tasks on Wikipedia. Um, we had observations and interviews in the courses for uh, internet and Wikipedia for older people. So we actually went there, we saw what the problems were, we asked them, like, what do you like about it, what don't you like about it? We got some findings from that as well. And we had a Wikipedia demonstration at a fair for older people last month, and that was also a place to grasp valuable uh, feedback from them. So, thank you. So, um, the top five of the reasons why older people say that they don't use, well, they don't use, they don't contribute themselves to Wikipedia, it's actually, well, most people say, I'm just happy to read it. I don't feel like I absolutely need to write something myself. And something else that we heard quite a lot was, well, um, I would be interested to write something, but I don't feel like I have enough information to write. There was this older lady saying, 
well, I know quite a lot about everything, but I don't really know a lot about anything specifically. So she felt insecure about writing on Wikipedia. These were the two main things that came out there. And other reasons are, well, I don't feel comfortable editing things that other people wrote, or uh, I'm not comfortable with the technology. And also people said, well, I don't have the time, because they experienced it as a very time-consuming thing to write something on Wikipedia, or to add something, or to, to even edit something on Wikipedia. So these were the reasons, the main reasons why they said they're not contributing. Now, we didn't only ask why, why are you not contributing, we also asked, well, what would it take then for you to actually start contributing? Well, I'd be much likelier to, to contribute, and then people said, well, if I knew that there was a topic that really needed my help, and an extension where people would really benefit from my help, and they would value what I did, then that would, for me, that would be encouragement to actually start contrib uh, contributing. That was the main Thing. And then also other reasons were, well, if someone would show me how to do it, which is a technical aspect but also a social aspect, like if somebody could show me how to do it, I would rather start. Or um, if the technology was easier to use. And we had an older gentleman saying, well, if I had known that it was that hard to contribute something on Wikipedia, maybe I wouldn't even have started. So we, we asked him to contribute. and. He said he had huge usability problems. Now, we had some additional findings from the usability tests. Um, they're quite interesting, so we wanted to share them with you. Uh, one of them was, you have to keep in mind that this is done in Switzerland. People were native German speakers, Swiss German speakers. So one of the problems that they had was, uh, there were a lot of misconceptions about the language of Wikipedia. Like people actually said to us, well, I never tried Wikipedia because it's all in English, so why would I even start? I don't, need, I don't understand English. And they were not aware that Wikipedia Germany has, has a very vibrant and, and, and big uh, chapter, and they just didn't know. They actually didn't know that there was a German part, and they never even asked. They, they were just, they had a prejudice, so to say. That was one thing. Another thing was that they had well, as we said, usability problems, and one thing that was very difficult to them was when they tried to edit the whole, um, well, the info box syntax, for them is, is, is very frightening. I cannot put it the other way. That's very frightening to them. Now, in relation to that, they, they often had usability problems, like when we asked them to do a series of tasks, we, we saw that they had big problems, but the remarkable thing was that when we asked afterwards, like, what is the reason for you not to contribute on Wikipedia, they didn't cite those, those usability problems. They said, well, it was difficult, but maybe if we would use it more, we would learn it, or, or we could get over it. So the usability problem itself, they said, was not the biggest problem. The biggest problem they had was that they found it interesting, but not fitting in their life and they, they considered Wikipedia and online communities as something for their future. And, and this was something that I personally found very remarkable because of course the group of 60 plus people is, is very big. You have younger 60 plus people and older 60 plus people. And the younger people actually said, well, I'm very dynamic and I'm going everywhere and I, I just don't have the time to write on Wikipedia. Later, when I'm old and when I'm sitting at home, I will, I will write on Wikipedia, then it will be something for me. So this was, this was something very remarkable that came out of that. And lastly, but, but not least, something that I should add is that, of course, like this older group of these people is a very big group. So they're very heterogeneous, they're as heterogeneous as we are. So we cannot say the older person uh, or the younger person, but these are some things that came out of that and that we wanted to share with you. Okay, now just to sum up, uh, we have identified a few barriers and we have, on, on, based on the analysis of these barriers, obstacles, we have come up with some preliminary recommendations which we would like to kind of feed into these pilot uh, projects which we are running. Uh, and also to find out whether that's really the, the biggest barriers or whether we'll come up with some other stuff. Uh, very interestingly, um, 
A lot of these points uh, which figure on the recommendations are already on this kind of handout we got yesterday, like how to make uh, Wikimedia, Wikipedia or Wikimedia sister um, projects a better place, like a, a more sociable place. Um, and one we also got is, is the, the difficulty of editing um, in a space where there's text mingled with uh, syntax. So like a WYSIWYG editor movement, like what you see is what you get, that's something which we expect will really ease also the task of older newcomers. So we have the, the barrier of insecurity about their own knowledge. Um, it's not really clear that uh, their input is needed and wanted. Uh, so what we recommend, uh, recommend is like first uh, familiarize them with the idea of collective authorship. Uh, they might be startled to get feedback uh, or uh, somebody writing in their text as soon as they've published something. At the same time they feel a bit uh, uneasy editing, editing somebody else's text. So it's, it's a new concept, you have to get it across first. And the second point is show them easy ways to contribute to where they can putting in a little effort uh, based on their previous experiences, um, get to some positive uh, experience uh, contributing. That's very important. Um, then the second barrier is security about technology, lack of trust. Um, one approach which has been existing already for a while, maybe it has it's not always obvious for people that such a thing exists. It's the sandbox where you can just try out, uh, play around with code, uh, see how the whole platform works. Then the second one is to kind of provide help from warm expert, experts. It's very important to have this personal relationship aspect in this support. Um, it's also, for us, it has turned out to be very helpful to provide the support um, by peers, by other older people who are already online, so they don't have to excuse, oh, it's only for young people, I'm too old. Um, it's, it's sometimes a, a, an argument they have, and you can easily just um, circumvent it by talking to them via older people. Then the online mentoring program, it, it already exists in a lot of different um, language versions, we will have to look closely into it, whether uh, the mentoring is actually taking place in a way that fits all the people. What we found out by introductory courses is that talking to older um, people, you have to slow down a bit uh, the pace, um, especially because some of them still already, I mean, they still have uh, problems also just using internet and the computer, they're not uh, like the 20 years or a year old, they haven't grown up with internet, they haven't grown up with computers, some of them. Some of them are around already, have been around on the internet for a long time, but some are kind of new users, and you have to adapt uh, the pace. Yes. No, not yet. Well, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Sorry. And it's important to show who is behind Wikipedia. So give it a human face. So that's something I think the chapters, the different communities have to work on, like kind of present newcomers a human face of Wikipedia. Then there's, sorry, if you uh, there's a need for appreciation. I think we all have it, um, but some people are kind of needed a bit more, some, some, some people can uh, go through a lot of criticism without uh, stepping back. But what we found is that uh, a lot of older people uh, making the first steps, uh, having the first successes they need uh, to get some appreciation back, some positive feedback. Uh, so we have to find ways to provide positive feedback even if they are not 100% uh, perfect in their first steps. And then there's the other barrier uh, Karen has mentioned before. It is very important that the new activity fits people's life, like the rest of their life. Uh, life is not only about Wikipedia. Uh, and it's important to kind of create links between their 
their other interests and their work in, in media. So kind of one approach is not to talk to, the, to them as senior citizens, but to talk to them, to them as members of uh, historic societies of whatever hobby hobby clubs. Um, so kind of take this this kind of approach. Um, link Wikipedia activities with social interactions in real life. A lot of all the people are just looking for social contact. That's uh, that's quite funny. We're, we're also present in a shopping mall in Switzerland uh, for internet courses, general internet courses, photo courses, and there's a stand where people also can ask questions, and there are certain fraction of people who come there regularly just to talk to the guys at the stand. So uh, you also have these people who, who are maybe feeling a bit lonely, who want to have social interaction, and it's a good way just to kind of bring them together. Uh, and maybe think about how they can contribute to get And what is very important and I think is kind of happening almost automatically now, but maybe we can enforce it also a bit among the older population, it's very important that um, people above 50 or above 60 contributing um, to Wikipedia receive some kind of support from their peer group. I've talked uh, to, to people who have been around for quite a long time already on Wikipedia, among 50 plus. Uh, they often say, like, I have no friends who is actually contributing. A lot of them, when I talk to them about my activity, they, they find it strange, they can't understand it. So it's also maybe uh, a job for public relations to kind of, among this um, fraction of society, kind of get, get people used to the idea of volunteering in an online community, uh, working for free knowledge, and so on. So this will kind of encourage a lot more people to, to actually take the step and uh, do something actively. They receive recognition after that in their own peer group. And the last one I mentioned it is <coughs> make it easier to edit. Like, uh, it has become a lot easier. I think a lot of things have become a lot easier about the past years, uh, but it seems that new complicated stuff is always adding up. So, <laughs> I mean, it, it also at the same time it gets more complicated to edit. You get more templates, you get a lot of codes. Um, what we saw at the stand, uh, at the senior fair, was that people um, they click on the edit button, for example, of their community, uh, of their, of their um, town website. And typically there you have, uh, on the right side, you have an info box. But they're actually trying to, to edit the, the text on the left side. But if you click on the edit button, the first thing you see is the code for the info box. <laughs> yeah. So then you have to scroll down and find you the, the place where you're actually trying to edit. So that's already for the fir very first time editing that's uh, an obstacle. So if you can kind of reduce these first time like, obstacles, I think it will be easier kind of to, to drag in more, uh, a bit more people. And as the last um, recommendation, I kind of always repeat it everywhere, is that try to take the perspective of those who, who, you are, who you're trying to integrate. So in the project, we're always trying to kind of get both perspectives, like getting perspective of the newcomers, but also to get the perspective of the volunteers, of, of the existing community. And you really need both to understand these processes. You can't just uh, argue, uh, reason from one point of view, if you want to be successful. So user-centered design, user-centered approach. Yes. Yeah. So now we have reached uh, the official end of the presentation, so I would like now to open the, the workshop part um, with two questions, like the first one would be to maybe gather some reactions, we got already some reactions in the middle, but maybe we got, we'll get some more, and the second one is to, I would like to know about your experiences in your countries, um, I would like to maybe discuss how we're going to share our experiences in the future. I think we have to get something going like the 
um, the, school, the, the school program or like the GLAM, like getting different chapters who are, who are experiencing with, um, with older people to, to kind of share their um, has already a question. Yeah. Well, actually, generally speaking, you have touched on all the, all the relevant points. <clears throat> but I had a feeling that you were just uh, on the, the one side of the equation, namely the other the people. Because the most important thing is, of course, the relationship between the mentors, the editors, and, and the other. But the potential is huge. And we, we live in an era where the, and longevity has extended, and the retired uh, staff of uh, universities, hospitals, scientific institutions is, is a huge, enormous. First of all, this potential group should be approached. We should not expect them to come. They should be approached. And this is easily, uh, easily uh, done, because you can get the list, you can approach them. Then the second point is, they are intimidated. We are intimidated. I do not, well, let me talk about myself for, for a second. I do not belong to the, to the age group 60 and older. I belong to the group of 70 and older. And I'm a contributor to Wikipedia. And when I started it, I was intimidated because it all depends on the approach of your mentor and your, your, your editor. Because you have sometimes a feeling, how do you call it, the gray revolution? Well, some approach it as, uh, as uh, some approach as, uh, treat, uh, relate to it as uh, the color of the hair, but some of the mentors uh, relate to it as a, a, a reduction in the, the amount of gray matter in the gray. So one has to be careful when you, when you say gray revolution. What do you relate? What are you, what are you alluding to? Now, because. I, when I started writing, and, and it was writing is nothing, because we are all used to. I come from the academic and medical field, and there is no problem writing. And then one gets, uh, what did you do? Why don't you use a sandbag, a sandbox? Thank you very much. Uh, and then, uh, why don't you go and take the templates? Just look at the templates. This is a barrier. This is a barrier because don't forget, in our age. The digital revolution took place when we were there. We actually introduced the digital revolution into our institutions without knowing, without, without uh, initiating it, without inducing it. But we are the ones who introduced their all these technologies to the universities and the hospitals. I served as a deputy director of one of the biggest hospitals in the country. You can see it in on the beach near the medical school here. And I remember when we introduced the archive, the uh, digital archives in radiology departments, we had to send all our physicians and physicians <coughs> to work station, to work station, hands-on workstations and, and workshops in order to, to adopt all the new technologies. The same is true for Wikipedia. They should, the mentors should be very empathic, should be very, very uh, tolerant, should explain slowly and, and, and don't just take the template, but sit down <laughs> and uh, Look what you do, because this is a, this that language is a unique language. So my and that's that's what I you is that, uh, So I just have a friend who is seventy plus in, in, in my city, and he is just working with one of the NGOs which I was also coping, and he started editing Wikipedia as well, and he treat me as a, his personal tutor, which is sometimes tiresome. But anyway, the, 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 the feeling is that, first of all, you need that the, the older people have uh, emotional needs for to write something <coughs> which is not actually covered in Wikipedia, and they really need them emotional, that they just want to stay and leave something for uh, after his, his life. And then the second thing is that they have much higher uh, the expectation of uh, uh, treating them uh, well, they self-esteem than the younger generation. I mean, they, they, they want to be, to, 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 they, they don't like, for example, in Polish, you say pan and pan, which is like uh, Mr. and, and Mr. Oh, no, 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 no. That, that shows me now. This is not but, well, well, this, this. We are still teaching, I mean, uh, we are, we come from the field, 
We continued our life as if it was before we retired. There is no problem, no social problem whatsoever. It's just a question as a, as a matter of relationship between those who into mentor you, those who teach you how to do it, and, and, and ourselves. That is all. We, uh, we are still teaching, and we, we keep on teaching in the universities, although we are elder. And we like, we have time now to do it. Until yeah. now, we didn't have time. Now is the time. Now we have time, and we're free to do it. You see the major genius, huh? When you talk to teenager, so you can just to tell him, oh, you did this wrong, to do this like that. Okay. Exactly. And, and, then, and then when you talk with the older person, you should tell, would you like to, to, to do this like that is because this is not particularly well, and this is not like way. Well, I think you're talking about very interesting topics. I would just suggest now uh, that we kind of keep some stuff also for after the workshop because we're very tight on time, and that we kind of collect some more inputs to kind of think about it. And maybe afterwards, when you get out, we can kind of keep talking about it in smaller groups. Yeah. I think yeah. when you're dealing with positions, uh, with people who have been in a profession who then retire, um, the issue really is one of respectful to mentoring. Mm -hmm. But there are many retired people who did not have professions. And for them, I think you need to suggest to them things that might really be of interest. A history of their town, for example. Mm -hmm or some small issue that they are much more knowledgeable than they realize. And uh, workshops to give ideas as well as to show how to use it. Exactly. Yeah, the right, yeah. Yeah. Topics that have that touched their own life. Yeah, yeah well, I, would, I would relate to, to this with what the lady said. Uh, yeah, I agree what you said to be more specific, to give more topics that is uh, that specific topics that need my help. That was one of the viewers. I'm citing you and that's what you said. And uh, maybe we should think about that it's not only writing articles. Yeah, no. For example, we have a huge gap of missing images from the 60s, 70s, 80s, okay. the pre-digitalization <laughs> area. So and that's a point, that's an area where we really need this generation, take out your slides, take out your images, look what's there, what you can document in Wikipedia. And, uh, and for this, sometimes, of course, it's even more complicated to upload an image to comments than to contribute an uh, to text, but, but we can work on that. And sometimes you can just help people. It seems to work quite well. One entry point now is um, Wikilove Monuments yeah, uh, the yeah. contest. And like we kind of skipped the whole um, Meta information yeah. stuff, so they just mm -hmm. upload. Yeah, we will see. They can handle I'm that. still skeptical, but I will see. I'm involved in that. Yeah. <laughs> well, the comments said it's already running. This one it's already running. Yeah. People are kind of crazy about it. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a senior web um, blog and working group, a small one uh, until now, but um, people giving advice to other seniors, um, mm -hmm. like about photo photography and stuff. And there yeah. are two persons from the senior web Swiss so community who are assuring. Mm -hmm. um, Ensuring the yeah. liaison with the project manager at Wikimedia Switzerland. So it's uh, it's not um, very work intensive for the Wikipedia side. So yeah. they're kind of yeah. dealing with it among each other. And as they're a group dealing with the same kind of questions, like if there's aggressive behavior or whatever, until now it hasn't happened, but if it's puzzling or whatever, they can also just share it in their group. Mm -hmm. And some of them are maybe fr frustrated frustrated at some point of time and then others will say well at the beginning I also found it quite hard but actually it's quite easy uh, if you want I can show you so they, they're just dealing it uh, with it among each other so it's, the, the social aspect is very important. Yeah. Yeah, I was just going to kind of wonder if, if maybe you frame the problem the other way around it might be easier so rather than trying to frame what are the problems with other people you know with lots of my and good friends and not friends and that kind of stuff as I say what actually are all people doing <laughs> I did a big study for Civic Ventures and Long Term Action in the US about five years ago, where the assumption was how do we stimulate old people to volunteer? Right? Mm -hmm. And the answer was old people volunteer way more than young people. Yeah. They're out there a lot more. They do a huge, much larger variety of things. They get much more time in. The issue, is, issue isn't how do you get old people involved. The issue is why do they choose what they need to do and everything. And the answer is that they actually have way more choices than they need to do. Uh, and they ask those, those choices pretty sharply. Because I've got things to do in my life, I've done lots of things in my life, I only do lots of things that I really find interesting, mm -hmm. and the organization treats me well. 
the reality is most nonprofits, and we can do this notice of that, treat older people like they can see you. And so old people get there and say, I'm not, I'm not welcome now, go somewhere else. And they keep moving until they find a nonprofit that welcomes them. So the division came to was less about trying to <coughs> dump things out for older people, more a matter of saying, how do you make sure that somebody comes along with their slides to make them feel welcome? Because most people volunteer a lot. A huge, I mean, and a large variety of different stuff. The heterogeneity point is well taken because the data research suggests that they volunteer in a large variety of organizations in a larger variety of ways mm -hmm. um, in a, and, and much more flexible than how they do. So there's a huge amount of effort that's there if yeah. you tap into it. And you can also say the same about the gender topic. Women volunteer a lot. Yeah. We usually more than men, but they're less likely to contribute to doing it. So we have to think about that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there are also ways to draw people in, aside from very daunting things like write about the history of your town. Why don't you just do focus on small tasks, like say, okay, there's, there are words, there are misspellings, except the misspellings. The images are on the wrong side of the page. The, you know, the, 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 there are empty paragraph breaks. Little things that somebody can be can do automatically without thinking about have to be a great brain, and that way. Um, I think you know one test leads to the other. When they have one thing down pat, you go to the next thing. But not to have this. Oh, I have to write an article, or I have to edit somebody else's material. Not everybody is, is um, willing to do that. And also, there are so many small tests to be done. Just break down into smaller uh, portions. Well, well, the assumption is you're dealing with someone who wants to do something. We're not. You shouldn't be about telling people you have to do this and you have to contribute. I assume you're talking about people who would like to contribute, who don't quite know what to offer, don't realize what they know, um, and don't know how to do it. But um, I, I, I don't imagine this is about making people feel obligated to do something they don't want to do in person. No, I think what often happens is people what people are interested in contributing, they're being told how uh, one possible way of contributing, they try it out and they nothing for me. So the, actually the point would be to really show them a whole um, variety of, a variety of uh, possibilities of uh, contributing. Because people are all different, they have different personalities, they have different interests. Some of them want to really put something, some, something like a self-realization thing and others would just like to sit uh, one, two hours per day uh, doing something useful. It's not important that it's been seen. Uh, out there, or just do it. Um, people are all different, and we have to kind of try to talk to all of them. And yeah. that's a, that's a big challenge. Yeah. Yeah. Two more questions. Yeah. I think. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Killing, I think, was uh, very early. Yeah. <laughs> Wiki fairy or a wiki gnome, I think it's brilliant that you can be, 
have a sense of uh, uh, self-respect from being a good wiki home, or I know people who create lots of new articles and nothing in them. <coughs> they just they just happen to like not bothering with the detail, but other people like bothering with the detail. But it's not known that, that it's okay yeah, to be a detailed person or a not detailed person. Yeah. And I think that's one of the best things about the project. Is you can, but it, whatever way you get in, the, the skill base comes from that engagement, and it doesn't matter where. If you like your box, that's a pretty really cool way to learn the skill base. Well, there are there are a lot of things that you can do on the yeah. media, like. Uh, like the ones who were lucky enough to be in Mangala's uh, yeah. presentation yesterday, you have a beautiful overview of, of the, all the tasks that people yeah. can do and make that That's part of the It took me ages, I didn't realize that was yeah. funny, and that there's a strong emphasis on writing new articles and as you say, that's quite daunting. To write a new article is quite daunting, or even to write a great big chunk of an old one, but to fix one first, you then think, oh, this needs to be So we take Mangala. one last input. Yeah. Yeah. It is um, about the same topic, and um, I have to say that I uh, agree that um, motivation has to come first. With, um, like dealing with a specific group of people that um, you want to uh, to edit in Wikipedia, you cannot just assume that they they want to contribute. You have to find the people that um, do have some motivation, or you have to find the motivations for the people um, to actually contribute. So, starting with the hometown, for example, with the hobby uh, that, that pre-exists would be a good point for that. Uh, putting emphasis on the, on the social um, gratifications that Wikipedia gives could be um, a starting point. Just, uh, I think you have to, um, to think about the motivations that people have or could have um, first, because that is what makes uh, editing Wikipedia attractive. Um, be it as a wiki known, be it uh, as somebody who, who uh, compiles uh, complete articles or, or, or sends in photos, uh, but the motivation um, has to be has to be uh, the, the primary um, aspect that, that you think about if you want to to attract people to Wikipedia. Yeah. <laughs> Sitting isn't good for you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so Thank who's, you very much. who is interested in sharing experiences, who is interested in having some action directed to older people in your own countries? So just talk to me or talk to us and we'll find ways to share that. I think we will at some point we'll also move things on the outreach with you. Uh, My best memory was a talk in, in Antwerp and Bers, uh, in front of the community of French people there. And of course, this kind of club is on average 16 years old. Right? And 